सो गुड इवनिंग गाइज आई वेलकम यू ऑल बैक टू द सेशन आई होप ऑल ऑफ यू आर फाइन एंड दिस इज जस्ट अ कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ द पार्ट टू ऑफ ऑर्थोपेडिक्स टेस्ट एंड डिस्कशन इट वॉज इंटरप्टेड इन बिटवीन ड्यू टू सम इंटरनेट कनेक्टिविटी इशूज वी हैव लॉस्ट द कनेक्शन देर फोर आई एम रिकॉर्डिंग अ वीडियो द फॉर दिस पार्ट थ्री नाउ ओके विच विल बी अ कंटिन्यूएशन ऑफ जस्ट पार्ट टू वेर विल बी स्टार्टिंग फ्रॉम द क्वेश्चन वेर वी लेफ्ट दैट वॉज क्वेश्चन नंबर थर्टी टू ओके so we were discussing about fractures of necessity so question number 32 asks us below given fractures are considered fractures of necessity except so which is not a fracture of necessity it is asking so what are basically fractures of necessity fractures of necessity are the ones which are only managed by open reduction and internal fixation these are only managed by open reduction and internal fixation so like here option d says intra articular fracture those fractures which involves the joint too so if joints are involved there would be some dislocation associated there would be some deformity associated therefore in cases of intra articular fractures there is a risk of uh, cut of uh, like we are uh, the blood supply or the nerve supply can be cut off okay so please remember due to this risk intra articular fractures are always to be treated with open reduction and internal fixation so this is the first fracture of necessity second option b says galaisie fracture dislocation galaisie and montegia fracture dislocation which we have discussed in the previous video these are your fracture dislocation associated with your forearm bones that is your ulna and radius so these usually fractures galaisie and montegia these are also associated with radio ulnar joint dislocation which cannot be treated conservatively by just a closed reduction these are to be reduced by open reduction and internal fixation right therefore galaisie and montegia fracture dislocation are considered fractures of necessity and last one is option a that is fracture of lateral condyle of humerus fracture lateral condyle of humerus okay it is the common extensor origin for many of the extensor muscles of the forearm so if there is fracture of lateral condyle of humerus this uh, common extensor origin would be disrupted right leading to inability of extension of your wrist and your fingers right that can create a problem therefore for lateral condyle of humerus fracture also you need a open reduction and internal fixation so the three types of uh, fractures of necessity are lateral condylar humerus fracture galaisie and montegia fracture dislocation and lastly intra articular fractures so which is the exception over here option c intertrochanteric fracture of femur where the fracture line runs between the greater and the lesser trochanter of the femur it is your uh, it is not considered a fracture of necessity moving further to our question number 33 the below given condition in the following image is due to injury to which of the following now so please tell me guys what is this deformity which you can see this deformity which is seen over here is known as winging of scapula isko kya bola jata hai this is known as winging of scapula this question has been asked multiple times so please remember you need to remember this at any cost winging of scapula can be asked from anatomy also so please remember Winging of scapula is an injury to which nerve? It is an injury to your long thoracic nerve, also known as long thoracic nerve of Bell. Okay, also known as nerve two, serratus anterior. So please remember option D is your right answer. Long thoracic nerve of Bell or the nerve of nerve two serratus anterior. This is injured, which leads to serratus anterior palsy, and that can cause protrusion of the scapula, known as winging of scapula. Important one, right? Next one is your thoracodorsal nerve. Thoracodorsal nerve is also known as nerve to latissimus dorsi. It is also known as nerve to latissimus dorsi, which is this muscle over here. And latissimus dorsi is responsible for what? It is responsible for climbing. Therefore, it is also known as climber's muscle. Important, right? Next one is your upper trunk of brachial plexus. As we all know, if the upper trunk of brachial plexus is injured, that can lead to what? Upper trunk is made up of which roots? It is made up of C5 and C6 nerve roots, right? So if upper trunk of brachial plexus is injured, that can lead to Erb's paralysis. That can lead to Erb's palsy. Whereas if the lower trunk, which is made up of C8 and T1 nerve roots, okay, whereas the lower trunk, which is made up of C8 and T1 nerve roots, okay, if those are injured, that can lead to what? That can lead to Klumke's palsy that can lead to Klumke's palsy, right? Important one. Erb's palsy is also associated with shoulder dystocia when the shoulder is obstructing the delivery of the labor, right? That can also lead to Erb's palsy in the neonate. Okay. Erb's palsy may important deformity ke aal rakhni hai. It can lead to a policeman tip. Okay, it can lead to a policeman tip or a waiter step hand. Okay, it can lead to a policeman hand or a waiter step hand. Important one, right? <clears throat> Moving further to our next question, question number thirty-four. A person sustained a spinal cord injury and presented to you. 
on neurological examination you find flaccidity in the wrist and increased tone along with the decreased sensation in both of the lower limbs the likely transaction is so likely transaction kya hai isme se ye pata lagana hai so what is the person complaining of the person has sustained a spinal cord injury okay neurological examination pe we can find flaccidity at the level of the wrist and below that we can find increased tone increased tone is what increased tone is spasticity increased tone of muscles is known as what it is known as spasticity so we can find spasticity and decreased sensation in both of the lower limbs that is motor as well as the sensory component is being affected so the likely transaction is so before going to this question let's discuss some important points about your spinal cord lesions and your spinal nerve lesions how to differentiate your spinal cord lesions and spinal nerve lesions so we need to discuss on the muscle component and the sensory component also so if the lesion is at the level of spinal cord so what happens at the level of transaction okay at the level of transaction matlab agar c6 pe transaction hai to c6 ke innervations affect honge right so at the level of transaction there would be flaccid paralysis there would be flaccid paralysis so usually if the transaction is at the level of c6 and c6 innervates what c6 innervates wrist so there would be flaccid paralysis at the level of wrist important one okay whereas below the level of transaction whereas below the level of transaction there would be spasticity that is increased tone below the level of uh, transaction there would be spasticity increased tone right whereas if there is a spinal nerve lesion agar spinal nerve lesion hota hai so please remember at the level of transaction there would be flaccidity so at the level of transaction matlab agar c6 pe lesion hai so c6 ki flaccidity hogi c6 spinal nerve mein lesion hai to there would be flaccidity in the uh, area where c6 is innervating right and below the level of transaction everything would be normal below the level of transaction everything would be normal because this is a spinal nerve lesion ye nerve lesion it is not a spinal cord lesion right important and checking the sensory component agar hum neurological examination mein sensory component check karte hai to hame kya dikhega in cases of spinal cord lesion there would be complete sensory loss there would be complete sensory loss from the level of transaction and below okay so please remember from level of transaction itself there would be a complete sensory loss right so yahan pe c6 c6 ke niche kya hoga there would be decreased sensation or there would be complete sensory loss altogether okay whereas in cases of spinal nerve lesion there is sensory loss only in the distribution of the nerve okay there is sensory loss only in the distribution of the specific nerve yaad rakhna ye okay important one next if there is disc prolapse what do we mean by disc prolapse there is translation of the intervertebral disc either anteriorly or either posteriorly this is known as a disc prolapse which is the most common level of disc prolapse this can be asked again and again so the most common level of disc prolapse is the level of l4 and l5 so important one most common level of disc prolapse is l4 l5 most common level of disc prolapse is l4 l5 yaad rakhna aur ek one liner yaad aa sakta hai which is the nerve affected in l4 l5 so please remember always the second number is affected matlab isme l5 nerve would be affected so please remember if there is a disc prolapse l4 l5 l5 nerve is affected if there is a disc for, uh, disc prolapse l3 l4 l4 nerve would be affected yaad rakhna hai okay important one so in this cases when there is a disc prolapse as l4 l5 it innervates the knees right therefore the knee reflexes would be diminished okay the knee reflex would be, would be decreased either there would be decreased or uh, knee reflexes or there would be a reflex yeah whereas the ankle reflex would be completely normal ankle reflexes would be completely normal which are innervated by your sacral nerves right so isme bhi kya hai there is <coughs> loss just at the level of transaction below the level of transaction everything is normal and disc prolapse now let's go back to our question yahan pe kya bola unhone there is a spinal cord injury right and the patient is presenting to you on neurological examination you find flaccidity in the wrist flaccidity in the wrist wrist extensors kahan se hote hai so wrist extensors are innervated by your c6 spinal nerve it is innervated by your c6 nerve root right and there is increased tone along with decreased sensation in both the lower limbs okay so below the level of transaction hame kya dikh raha hai increased tone that is spasticity and decreased sensations right so the likely transaction is so the likely transaction is at the level of c6 vertebral fracture so why are we ruling out c5 c6 spinal nerve root injury as we have discussed already in cases of spinal nerve root injury the 
below the level of transaction everything would be normal below the level of transaction there would be no spasticity okay there would be no spasticity but as in this case there is spasticity and it is a spinal cord lesion therefore it is option a c6 vertebral fracture l4 l5 disc prolapse would lead to diminished knee reflexes okay it would be lead to diminished knee reflexes and not lead to flaccid wrist paralysis right important one moving further to our question number 35 a person presented to you with a pus discharging sinus on the shin he gives a history of pus drainage from the same site but after which he was prescribed antibiotics which he did not take so the patient is non compliant the x-ray is given below which is the earliest radiographic sign in these infections so now they are asking about bone infections and bone infections are what bone infections are nothing but osteomyelitis bone infections are what osteo myelitis they are classified as acute subacute and chronic so by acute we mean the infection for less than 3 days okay infection for less than 3 days is considered acute osteomyelitis infection between 3 to 21 days is considered subacute osteomyelitis and infection lasting for more than 21 days is considered chronic osteomyelitis right this is the basic classification on the duration of the disease right now some important one liners which can come from osteomyelitis which is the most common cause of bacterial osteomyelitis and the most common cause of bacterial my osteomyelitis is what it is your staph or yes most common cause of bacterial osteomyelitis is what it is your staphylococcus aureus most common cause of parasitic osteomyelitis so most common cause of parasitic osteomyelitis is your echinococcus granulosus okay so please remember echinococcus granulosus leads to what it leads to hydrated cyst so please remember echinococcus granulosus also known as dog tapeworm it is the most common cause of parasitic osteomyelitis next most common cause of osteomyelitis in hemoglobinopathies whenever there is a hemoglobinopathy like thalassemia or sickle cell anemia this question has been asked repeatedly so if there is a hemoglobinopathy in any individual what is the most common cause of osteomyelitis then your answer would change to salmonella so please remember salmonella is the most common cause of osteomyelitis in any hemoglobinopathy and which is the most common cause of osteomyelitis in iv drug abusers in iv drug abusers the most common cause of osteomyelitis is your pseudomonas it is your pseudomonas important points right now let's discuss few points about acute osteomyelitis okay so acute my osteomyelitis is infection of bone lasting for less than 3 days okay the most common site of the bone where acute osteomyelitis occurs is your metaphysis why is metaphysis the most common site because it contains hairpin blood vessel arrangement and this hairpin blood vessel arrangement can predispose the bacteria over there okay that can lead to pre uh, bacterial infections okay so please remember due to pooling of these bacteria and this hairpin blood vessels the metaphysis becomes the most common site for your osteomyelitis okay not only for acute for any of the osteomyelitis metaphysis is the most common site now talking about the x ray changes which can be seen in cases of osteomyelitis the x ray change the earliest sign on an x ray which is seen is your loss of soft tissue planes okay it is your loss of soft tissue planes important one which is the earliest sign seen on an x ray of osteomyelitis the answer would be loss of soft tissue planes and what do we do the earliest bony change as it is an infection it would set a inflammation and that can lead to a periosteal reaction that can lead to a periosteal reaction so please remember the earliest bony change would be periosteal reaction but the earliest sign overall would be loss of soft tissue planes on an radiograph what is the best investigation so the best investigation for osteomyelitis would be a mri that is magnetic resonance imaging and what is the treatment the treatment would be definitely antibiotics but in cases when there is a pus discharging sinus the treatment should be a pus drainage okay the treatment should be pus drainage along with the antibiotic cover which is usually given for a period of 8 to 10 weeks right important one now just discuss some few points about chronic osteomyelitis okay is x ray mein kya dikh raha hai this is a x ray of acute osteomyelitis here you can see the loss of soft tissue planes along with periosteal reaction which is the earliest bony change and along with some bony destruction due to the infection this is your brody's abscess this image has come earlier brody's abscess is what brody's abscess is usually seen in cases of subacute osteomyelitis okay it is usually seen in cases of subacute osteomyelitis it is a abscess with a sclerotic border outside it okay 
नेक्स्ट वन इज योर क्रॉनिक ऑस्टियोमाइलाइटिस क्रॉनिक ऑस्टियोमाइलाइटिस में तीन चीजें आर इंपॉर्टेंट ओके फर्स्ट इज योर सीक्वेस्ट्रम व्हाट इज योर सीक्वेस्ट्रम ओवर यू कैन सी सीक्वेस्ट्रम इज एक्चुअली द नेक्रोटिक बोन दैट इज दैट इज यूजुअली सराउंडेड बाय द पस और द इन्फेक्टेड ग्रैनुलेशन टिश्यू सो द नेक्रोटिक बोन इज नोन एज योर सीक्वेस्ट्रम व्हिच इज यूजुअली सराउंडेड बाय पस और योर इन्फेक्टेड ग्रैनुलेशन टिश्यू नेक्स्ट इज योर इन्वॉल्यूक्रम वॉट डू वी मीन बाई इन्वॉल्यूक्रम इन्वॉल्यूक्रम इज द डेंस न्यू बोन फॉर्मेशन अराउंड द सिक्वेस्ट्रम सो अराउंड सिक्वेस्ट्रम वी कैन सी दिस न्यू डेंस बोन फॉर्मेशन विच इज नोन एज इन्वॉल्यूक्रम एंड लास्ट इज योर क्लुएका और इज योर क्लुएका क्लुएका इज द ओपनिंग फॉर पस साइनस ड्रेनेज ओके सो ओपनिंग फॉर योर पस ड्रेनेज फ्रॉम द इन्वॉल्यूक्रम इज नोन एज योर क्लुएका ओके दिस इज अबाउट योर क्रॉनिक ऑस्टोमैलाइटिस नाउ लेट्स बैक गो बैक टू आर क्वेश्चन A person presented to you with a pus discharging sinus on the shin. He gives a history of pus drainage from the same site, but after which he was prescribed antibiotics, which he did not take. That means there is a inadequate treatment which is given. Okay, so the person usually was suffering from acute osteomyelitis, for which he was treated with pus drainage and antibiotic cover was given. But now there is inadequate treatment which would progress this acute osteomyelitis to. chronic osteomyelitis right on an x ray what can be seen so see on this x ray we can see this radio lucent area in between which is known as your sequestrum which is known as your sequestrum around that we can see a dense zone of bone formation which is known as your involucrum okay and a pus discharging sinus would be known as your cloaca right so now they are asking which is the earliest radiographic sign in these infections option a loss of soft tissue planes option b moth eaten appearance option c periosteal reaction option d sequestrum so as we all know the earliest radiographic sign in these infections that is in cases of osteomyelitis would be loss of soft tissue plane if they would have asked earliest radiographic bony sign then the earliest radiographic bony sign would have been periosteal reaction usually moth eaten appearance is seen in late course of the disease okay and sequestrum is the hallmark of chronic osteomyelitis yaad rakhna sequestrum is the hallmark of chronic osteomyelitis moving on to a question number 36 they are asking the most radio sensitive tumor okay the most radio sensitive bone tumor we have already discussed this earlier and as we all know the most radio sensitive or chemo sensitive bone tumor is what option c ewing sarcoma so please remember ewing sarcoma is the most radio sensitive or chemo sensitive brain bone tumor and which is the most radio resistant bone tumor which cannot be treated with radiotherapy at all so please remember osteosarcoma and chondrosarcoma are the most radio resistant bone tumors these are the most radio resistant bone tumors and chondroma ke bare mein ek baat kya yaad rakhoge so please remember and chondroma is the most common bone tumor of hand so yaad rakhna and chondroma is actually the most common bone tumor of hand okay if they ask most common tumor of hand so please remember most common tumor of hand would be a skin cancer known as squamous cell carcinoma but if the question is most common bone tumor of hand then the answer would be enchondroma yaad rakhna hai now moving on to a question number 37 here they are asking a 10 year old child was brought to ortho casualty when he fell while playing a x ray of shoulder was ordered which revealed the below given finding okay this is the finding you can see what is the likely diagnosis so they are asking you a likely diagnosis first of all what we can see the child well while uh, fell while praying and he has sustained a fracture over here but when we were actually looking at the fracture we have found out an incidental finding okay which was not diagnosed the child did not have any symptoms it was usually asymptomatic and this finding was seen what is this finding actually is it a aneurysmal bone cyst is it a giant cell tumor is it a unicameral bone cyst or it is a non ossifying fibroma so let's discuss guys first of all this is some a cystic swelling like thing okay there is fluid inside this okay radio lucent fluid dikh raha hai mai so this is some cystic swelling so either it is a aneurysmal bone cyst or it or it is a unicameral bone cyst so now let's discuss few features about your bone cysts so either it can be a simple or unicameral bone cyst or it can be a aneurysmal bone cysts okay important remember So now, unicameral bone cyst is common in which age group? It is usually common in the first decade of life. It is usually common in the first decade of life. Whereas aneurysmal bone cyst is usually common in the second decade of life. It is common in the second decade of life. The most common site for unicameral bone cyst is what? So the most common site is your proximal humerus. The most common site for unicameral 
your bone cyst is what proximal humerus or your proximal femur whereas the most common site for your aneurysmal bone cyst is what it is your lower limb it can occur anywhere but the most common site is your lower limb what is the location the location for your unicameral bone cyst it is usually central okay yes center mein hoga bone ke whereas the location for aneurysmal bone cyst it is usually eccentric it is usually located at the margin okay over here you can see it is usually located at the margin whereas unicameral bone cyst it is sparing the margin it is located in the middle of the bone that is at the center of the bone right usually a uh, unicameral bone cysts are asymptomatic whereas aneurysmal bone cysts are associated with pain these are associated with pain at times then we can see a cavity formation in cases of unicameral bone cysts there would be a single cavity whereas in cases of aneurysmal bone cysts there would be a multi loculated cavity and this multi loculated cavity is due to all these septa which are seen okay these septa are dividing this cyst into different loci okay there is a multi loculated cyst which can be seen then in cases of simple bone cyst we can usually find a straw colored fluid we can find a straw colored fluid whereas in cases of aneurysmal bone cyst we can find a hemorrhagic fluid we can usually find a hemorrhagic blood stain fluid what is the treatment of simple bone cyst simple bone cyst is usually treated with a curettage it is usually treated with a curettage whereas aneurysmal bone cyst is usually treated with a extended curettage it is treated with a extended curettage important one right now let's go back to our question and one more important finding that we can see over here in this unicameral bone cyst yaha pe kya dikh raha hai here we are over here we can see a sign known as fallen leaf sign ye kya dikh raha hai jaise patta ped se jhad ke gir raha ho okay this is known as your fallen leaf sign okay so please remember this is known as your fallen leaf sign also known as your trap door sign okay this is known as your fallen leaf sign or trap door sign seen in cases of unicameral or simple bone cyst in this x ray also they have shown a arrow which is showing some fallen leaf like appearance so this is your fallen leaf sign so the uh, answer over here would be option c unicameral bone cyst what were the keywords first decade of life 10 year old child hai theek hai so this is a incidental finding which is asymptomatic child did not experience any of the pain or any of other symptoms right so this is just a incidental finding on which we can on which we can see this fallen leaf or trap door sign so this is a case of option c unicameral bone cyst right aneurysmal bone cyst giant cell tumor and non ossifying fibroma are very close differential diagnosis of each other moving further to our question number 38 which states a 30 year old male presented with knee pain and swelling near the joint the x ray of this patient is given below a core needle biopsy taken is given below which revealed multinucleated giant cell isme kya dikh raha hai hame we can see multinucleated giant cell all these are your multinucleated giant cells what is the most likely diagnosis okay so just tell me 30 year old male hai there is knee pain and swelling in your the joint okay here over here you can see which appearance in the x ray on the x ray you can see a so bubble appearance though it is very much uh, not very much clear then also you can see a so bubble appearance on an x ray okay so over here the lesion is extended up to extending up to the joint and which is the bone tumor usually which extends up to the joints so please remember the only bone tumor which extends up to the joints or up to the epiphysis is your giant cell tumor okay right along with that the core needle biopsy the histopathological examination is also in our favor which is also showing multinucleated giant cells as you all know in giant cell tumor the name itself tells us that on histopath there would be giant cells which will have multiple nuclei these are known as your multinucleated giant cells this was the same question which came in the august 2020 examination important one okay so what is the most likely diagnosis over here giant cell tumor and what are the options osteosarcoma osteoclastoma fibrous dysplasia and metastasis yahan to giant cell tumor hai hi nahi so please remember giant cell tumor is also known as osteoclastoma so option b or uh, option b is your right answer that is osteoclastoma or giant cell tumor which gives a soap bubble appearance on an x ray please remember giant cell tumor is usually a metaphyseal tumor which extends up to the epiphysis or up to the joint okay and one more diaphyseal tumor which gives a soap bubble appearance is known as adamantinoma it is known as your adamantinoma fibrous dysplasia ek baat yaad rakhni hai tumhe fibrous dysplasia leads to a deformity known as shefford crook deformity it leads to a deformity known as shefford crook deformity 
right and osteosarcoma we have discussed in details there would be sun bust or sundry appearance along with cordman's triangle would be seen right and one more feature about giant cell tumor it is usually seen after skeletal maturity that is around 30 40 years of age right moving on to the next question that is question number 39 where a 43 year old lady presented to the ortho pd with polyarthralgia that is pain in all the joints of multiple joints that is known as polyarthralgia okay so polyarthralgia in all the four limbs and complaints of stiffness in joints when she gets up in the morning for one hour so there is morning stiffness which is lasting for almost one hour on examination her hand reveals the following deformity ye deformity dikh rahi uske hand mein there is flexion of your proximal interphalangeal joint okay and when there is flexion of this proximal interphalangeal joint this known as which deformity this is known as mountaineer's deformity this is known as what this is known as your mountaineer's deformity so which is the joint spared in this diagnosis wo kya puch rahe which joint is not involved or which is the joint spared in this diagnosis so first of all let's put a provisional diagnosis for us so there is a 43 year old lady presenting to orthopedy there is polyarthralgia in all the four limbs also there is joint stiffness okay and joint stiffness is almost lasting for how much it is lasting for more than 1 hour and examination reveals a mountaineer deformity so usually the provisional diagnosis in this age group usually in ladies the common finding is rheumatoid arthritis the calf provisional diagnosis we can put over here is rheumatoid arthritis and as we all know in cases of rheumatoid arthritis the joint which is spared is your option b distal interphalangeal joint dip this joint distal interphalangeal joint is not involved in cases of rheumatoid arthritis this question has been asked twice or thrice so please remember it is very important okay the joint spared in cases of rheumatoid arthritis is your dip joint important one right let's discuss some important point about your osteoarthritis and rheumatoid arthritis these images are showing you late stages of osteo and rheumatoid arthritis okay osteoarthritis is more common in males whereas rheumatoid arthritis is more common in females yaad rakhna hai okay osteoarthritis can lead to fusiform swelling of the joints there would be swelling of the joints along with that there would be presence of these nodes and what are these nodes known as these nodes are known as heberdens nodes okay so either we can see heberdens nodes or we can see bouchard's nodes okay so please remember bouchard's or heberdens nodes would be usually seen in cases of osteoarthritis osteoarthritis is usually a degenerative disease degenerative disease matlab kya hota hai the articular cartilage which usually covers the bone at the joint okay so the bone at the epiphysis is covered by articular cartilage okay so this articular cartilage undergoes degeneration okay and as this articular cartilage undergoes degeneration there is cartilage loss and that can lead to the friction of joints and thus leads to this osteoarthritis like condition okay usually in osteoarthritis there is cartilage loss and the morning stiffness in cases of osteoarthritis is lasting for more than 30 minutes the usual it is usually lasting for more than 30 minutes so please remember uh, it is usually lasting for less than 30 minutes it is usually lasting for less than 30 minutes in cases of osteoarthritis okay we can see heberdens nodes and the arthritis or the arthralgia which is usually seen in cases of osteoarthritis is asymmetrical okay only one side of the body would be affected only one knee joint is affected or only one uh, wrist is affected okay this is usually seen in cases of osteoarthritis the joint spared is your mcp that is your metacarpophalangeal joint whereas the joint spared in rheumatoid arthritis is your dip that is your distal interphalangeal joint what happens in rheumatoid arthritis there is a inflamed synovium okay there is inflammation of the joint that leads to this uh, condition known as rheumatoid arthritis it is usually seen in females over here we can see flexion of the in the proximal interphalangeal joint leading to mountaineer's deformity and if there is flexion of the distal interphalangeal joint that leads to the swan neck deformity right along with that we can see ulnar deviation of the metacarpophalangeal joint ulnar deviation of the metacarpophalangeal joint rheumatoid arthritis is usually an autoimmune disease when the antibodies are formed against the synovium itself so antibodies against the synovium can lead to destruction of the synovium can set in the inflammation in the joint leading to rheumatoid arthritis here the morning stiffness is usually lasting for more than 30 minutes okay it is usually lasting for more than 30 minutes around one hour 
the uh, morning stiffness lasts okay this is a symmetrical condition where both the joints on both the limbs would be affected like both the wrist joints are affected both the knee joints are affected okay and it also has some extra articular involvement that is in cases of rheumatoid arthritis we can see rheumatoid nodules in the lungs there would be eye involvement also there would be skin involvement also where we can see subcutaneous rheumatoid nodules okay so it is a multi-system disease okay i hope now this has answered your question about rheumatoid arthritis next last question is your question number 14 a 35 year old male presents with chronic lower back pain and pain while bending down okay there is a chronic lower back pain and the patient also experiences a pain while bending down the x-ray is given below what is the most likely diagnosis so as we all know this is a very common question repeated again and again and i hope this is very easy for you guys too what is the x-ray showing you the x-ray is showing you arrows over here okay it is showing you inflammation around the both sacroiliac joints so it is actually showing you bilateral sacroilitis okay and as we all know bilateral sacroilitis is the most pathognomic feature of which disease bilateral sacroilitis is the most pathognomic feature of ankylosing spondylitis so option a is over answer over here usually in cases of ankylosing spondylitis it is a young male who is affected okay so please remember a young male presenting with chronic lower back pain the first diagnosis that you need to rule out is ankylosing spondylitis here the x-ray also shows you your bilateral sacroiliitis which is the most pathognomic feature of as along with that here the spine is uh, uh the spine appearance is characteristic what we can see in the spine the intervertebral discs are fused okay the vertebra appears to be fused and this fusion of vertebra gives a characteristic appearance to the spine known as bamboo spine what we can see in the spine we can see bamboo spine along with this in the center of the spine what is passing over here we can see uh, this uh radio opaque opaque sign which is seen usually known as dagger sign what is this known as dagger sign so please remember in ankylosing spondylitis the most pathognomic sign is bilateral sacroiliitis okay and what are the two signs associated with spine bamboo spine and dagger sign okay don't uh, forget it at any cost hemangioma usually hemangioma of vertebra also presents with uh, back pain but in the x-ray you can see a corduroy or a jail bar pattern okay in this hemangium of vertebra you usually can see a corduroy pattern or a jail ball pattern right important one so here we end our discussion of orthopedics i hope uh, this was fruitful for you and uh, let's meet in the next session of sparks till that see you guys and all the best for your preparations let's meet in the next discussion of sparks